to whom mercy and forgiveness belong. Hear our prayers on behalf of your servant and whom you have called out of this world. And because she put her hope and trust in you, command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have our first reading from the Old Testament. reading from the book of the prophet Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. I, Daniel, mourned, and I heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. There'll be a time unsurpassed in distress, since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. Those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Revelation 21, a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place, 
place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. The word of the Lord. Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world would preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, the theme that pervades today's Gospel is life. And in a world in which we're constantly on the move, In a world in which multitasking is the order of the day, rarely, if ever, do we take the time to recollect, to reflect, and contemplate on our most prized possession, life itself. In our business and preoccupation with material things that are of lesser value, life-changing illnesses and death gives us a redeeming moment of pause. A redeeming moment of pause for us to recollect and reflect on the simple yet important things that make life the most meaningful and by extension, the most joyful. The gift of friendship, the gift of family, time shared with those we care about, and yes, our Catholic faith. While this reality of life has been lost on us in this technological age, for Anne, it was the source of renewed purpose that gave meaning and joy to her life. And so with great devotion and fidelity, she gave of herself to her husband Bill, her family, her friends, and her faith. In consequence of her loving devotion as a wife, mother, grandmother, and friend, what we remember, should remember, and will remember is not the quantity or quality of her material possessions, but rather the quality of her personhood, the quality of her soul. And of all the great qualities that Anne exhibited, the one that will be forever enshrined and should be forever enshrined in our memories and our hearts is how willingly, readily, and cheerfully she gave of herself. This selfless generosity in which she made of herself a gift to others was exemplified by the diligence, zeal, and tenacity in which she fulfilled her vows as a wife her duty as a daughter, a mother, 
grandmother, and friend. There is no other place on earth where the sun of nature avows, promises, and oath are impressed on the human consciousness than in Holy Mother Church. In sacred scripture, we read of the many great promises and vows and oath which God has made, some already fulfilled, some being fulfilled, and others yet to be fulfilled. We have the promises of the blessings of salvation, grace, peace, temporal and spiritual prosperity, justification, pardon of sins, redemption from death, and of course, eternal life. And the sacraments which God has generously and richly provided for his church, for his people, not only do we have a pledge, a down payment of the fulfillment of these promises, but through them we make a return to God of our promises, praises, gratitude, vows, and oath. And from these sacraments we derive the grace and strength to fulfill the promises, the vows, and the oath we ourselves have made. Unlike the empty promises of politicians and the ungodly, who promises much, who promise much, but do very little, these divine promises are designed to be fertile ground in which faith in God is established, cultivated, and nourished. And as the saints of the ages bore witness, firmly rooted in the faith of God, one becomes a pillar of strength, a model of virtue, integrity, and honor, worthy of everyone's emulation and praise. Living as we are in a time when promises, vows, and oath have little or no meaning, living as we are in a time when promises, vows, and oath are made as matters of convenience and expediency on this side of heaven and was for us all a beacon of hope pillar of strength, the model of virtue, integrity and honor, a woman worthy of our emulation and praise, one who was faithful to her vows, her promises and her oath, as a mother, as a wife, grandmother and friend. Such is the woman we knew, such is the lady we will remember. Because our soul is eternal, though she is no longer with us, through the eternal goodness of her soul, even in death, and still possesses the ability and the power to shape, influence, and mold us all. And to say that Anne possesses the power to influence, shape, and mold us, even in death, as she did in life, is in every way a confirmation of our Catholic faith that in death, life is not ended, because with faith in God, life springs eternal. On this side of heaven, there is no nobler and fitting way to send Anne home to receive the rewards of her many years of laboring in love than to celebrate her life in the context of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, in which we celebrate this sacrament in which we celebrate God's ultimate expression of love for his church, the gift of the life of his only son, through whom we as Catholics and the world was reborn to the living hope of the gift of eternal life. In a few moments, when we raise the cup of salvation and the bread of life, commending Anna Elizabeth to the loving mercy of God and to the communion of saints, let us pray that inasmuch as God saw her fit to receive the gift of earthly life, may also find her worthy to receive the gift of eternal life. Turn a rest, grant to her, grant to her Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace, amen, and may her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace, amen.
Please stand. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, and confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. And um, in response to each of these petitions, I ask you to respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Anna, Elizabeth, receive the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now, and lead over the waters of death, we pray to the Lord. Our brother and our sister, Anna, Anna Elizabeth, was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, we pray to the Lord. Lord the family and friends of Anna Elizabeth seek comfort and consolation. Be their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief, we pray to the Lord. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Anne. Spend our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the sacred altar for the sacrifice of the Mass.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. Lord, accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, be near, we pray, to your servant Anna Elizabeth, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, may by your love and gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed and not ending, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end, we have of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your truth, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you again. Therefore, as we celebrate. 
faith in the mode of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Remember your servant Anna Elizabeth, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, who with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Bernard and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. And at the Savior's command and told by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace us to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grace us to grant her peace and unity. Thank you. Forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you. Let us talk to each other the sign of peace. and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Worthy and not worthy you should enter under my roof. Now, Holy Mother Church invites her sons and daughters.
please stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant we pray that your servant, Anne Elizabeth, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the most lasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before our final blessing, uh, on behalf of Father Rasser, and certainly on behalf of the people of this parish, to William and Carol, and all the friends and relations of Anna Elizabeth, uh, deepest condolences. And as I always do at the end of the funeral, I have also my priestly duty to extend to you God's condolences. Because in the Book of Wisdom, God lays out and reminds us that this moment is not his. This moment of death, that's not his making. It reminds us that when he made us in his image and likeness, when he made us, he made us his image in his image and likeness, death is not his creation. Death is ours. But nevertheless, one of the great beauty that God does with death, he can transform and redeem it and teach us great wisdom. And may I for a moment mother the counsel. Moms are always good for that. In nine years of life, your mom has great counsel. And this is our final act. And if I may point to you two particular final acts that she gives to you. First, the importance of family. It's important. It's the bedrock of every society. It's the bedrock of our lives. The greater and stronger that union is, is the greater and more productive and joyful and meaningful our lives. And the greatest gift she'll give to you, this is her final gift. Faith. We all walk through life with staffs. Some people, their staff or their possessions, their wealth, their honor, their degrees, whatever the case may be. This is the ultimate moment of truth, that the greatest staff and the only staff that supports us in life, whatever holds true in death must hold true in life. And the last staff we have, and the one that stands is the staff of faith. That was your mom. That's her gift to you. And therefore, when you leave this moment to make sure her death, just like from the resurrection, new life, emerges with death from the gospel unless a wheat grain of wheat falls to the ground it remains it but the moment it dies it bears much fruit and this is her last gift to you take hold of it it's your most important gift the day is going to come when you're going to need it i will need it and of all the staff of life that we have this is the one that never fails be mindful the Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.